Austin ISD is now one of the few major members of the Council of Great City Schools where economically disadvantaged enrollment this year went under 50 percent. Boomtown is our look at the rapid growth in Central Texas and one of the big trends we've been watching is skyrocketing home prices. Gentrification is real in Austin. There's no denying of it. You can drive around downtown, you can drive around South Austin, East Austin, and you can see it. You have your Equinox, you have this, like every lifestyle brand that everyone wanted to bring from New York or LA is suddenly on this street here. Think about it, we had so many jobs here in the city are dependent on service class jobs. You had a lot of restaurants being closed. You had a lot of service industry jobs being closed. For many families, your income that you were having in the past just simply wasn't being met before. And if you can't have your full income being met, that's gonna be really challenging to make things work. I mean, especially many of our students are dependent on cash economy jobs, and a lot of those jobs just weren't happening. So yeah, so a lot of this area used to be lower income housing, but Oracle bought this massive plot of land here and moved their um, formal corporate headquarters from Silicon Valley out here. At a certain point is that many of the poor families are just simply being pushed out of the city. We have seen more families move away because the city core of Austin is getting very expensive. Teachers as well, you know, we have our teachers moving outside of the Austin city limits and for some that means that they have to leave us. We hear all the time about Austin ISD's enrollment declines. We can hear it with charters that we work with. I feel like for students who were um, coming from privileged backgrounds that their parents were like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to be a teacher. I don't know how to come up with all of this stuff. I'm gonna go send you out to the best tutor. We're gonna come up with a pod. We're gonna come up with some learning solution that's gonna work for you. Many of those students are probably actually emerging ahead of where they would have been otherwise from the pandemic. 87% of kids here in the state of Texas actually took the STAR, which is our end of the year assessment. So we can at least see for most kids where their academic gaps are. And I think it's gonna come out to a really targeted intervention plan. We had lots of students, especially in math. Our math numbers statewide here in Texas were demoralizing, depressing, but it was a real wake up call. It's gonna be need to be a really intensive math tutoring for hundreds of thousands of kids across our state, and even millions of kids. There's 5.4 million kids in Texas public schools. And there are probably a couple million kids that are behind where they need to be at this point. So it's going to be really important that we have really strong math interventions in the next year or two to help catch up kids from uh, what for many kids was a missed school year. We saw significant learning loss for some of our students. Those that were most impacted, I think, were the children that require special opportunities. You can tell that the city council is very concerned with affordable housing in Austin right now, and so it has to be dealt with because it's, it's, it's a problem that's increasing, it's not going away. We can see and feel and hear that, that pinch, and uh, when families have to move away, it stings. That's like losing a family member. Austin's challenge for this next decade is going to be how can we really build an inclusive community that is a socioeconomically and racially inclusive community there where one where students and families are truly thriving for the future of our city.